Hey, what's going on, summoners? Did you know that there is only one real difference between a challenger player and a grandmaster player? This difference can actually be seen at all levels of play, and with improvement, you can use it to your advantage. My name is Crumbs, and today we're going to be taking a look at the secret to carrying in every elo. Climbing can be difficult, but with good technique and dedication, anyone can rank up. We'll be breaking down how you can use this secret in different aspects of your own gameplay so that you can grind before the season ends. Let's not waste any more time and dive right in. There are a lot of aspects to climbing the ranks in League of Legends. You have to learn a ton of different strategies and apply your knowledge when it's needed. It requires discipline to analyze your mistakes and seek improvement by learning more about the game. At the root of all of this, what matters the most when looking to climb is consistency. Remember our comparison between a challenger and grandmaster player? Both of these ranks show some of the highest level of play thanks to players knowing the ins and outs of the game. The difference between them is very rarely a lack of skill or knowledge. Instead, these players have a different level of consistency when it comes to their gameplay. A grandmaster player will execute all aspects of the game at a top level in about 6 out of 10 of their games. This means that their other four games are usually a bit rough around the edges and don't have them using their full focus and strategy. Compare this to a challenger player and you see a massive difference. The challenger player will consistently play at their best in about 8 or 9 of their games out of 10. This means that in the long run, the challenger player will maintain a high skill level and use their knowledge to win games. Sure, they'll occasionally make a mistake when it comes to micro or macro, but the difference is that it's not as common for them as it is for a Grandmaster player. This rule of consistency is not limited to the difference between a Grandmaster and Challenger player. It can easily be spotted at all ranks. It's just easiest to show this comparison at a high level of play since there are less variables involved. Being a consistent player sets you up for success nearly every game and it can help you climb rather quickly. You'll still have to learn key tactics and skills, but if you're able to apply them each and every game, you'll see the results yourself. We're going to dive into a few key strategies that you not only need to pick up and master, but that you practice applying in each and every game. It'll take a lot of your mental power and focus, but it is the best thing you can do if you're looking to climb and carry in every elo. This amount of mental focus is why we recommend not playing more than 3 or 4 games each time. You'll get enough time to improve and practice while also not burning yourself out as long as you limit your games. Before we continue on to our key strategies, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of guides and videos to help you take your gameplay to the next level. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry, we have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGuides family. Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive back into the video. When it comes to using consistency to your advantage, one of the biggest tools you have is CSing. Having high CS numbers is something you can achieve each and every game. Regardless of how your allies are doing, this is one of the few variables you can always control. CS is an extremely important part of League of Legends because of how much gold you gain from it. It may not seem that important, but if you're able to consistently hit 7 to 9 CS per minute, you will hit your power spikes at a good rate. Being able to hit said spikes allows you to have a constant power curve to play around. Plus, if the enemy doesn't CS as well as you, you'll usually have an item advantage from CS alone. All of this put together gives you a strong advantage over other players, and sure, you may currently hit high CS numbers every once in a while, but that's just not enough. To follow our consistency rule, you should be getting these high CS numbers as often as possible. Eventually, you'll be able to hold high CS each and every game without second thought. Be sure to put in the time and invest in learning how to keep your numbers high. This can be done through practice regimens like CSing with LeBlanc and Practice Tool, or you can watch some of our other videos to help you take the first step. Regardless of how you choose to approach it, just know that CSing is a powerful fundamental that can easily help you carry games if you get consistent at it. Speaking of gold advantages, we have the power of going for selfish plays. Now when we say selfish plays, we don't necessarily mean playing hero and forcing fights. Instead, we mean that you should go for plays that benefit you or your carry. This is a major reason that so many players lose out on CS and experience. Going for plays can often be a coin flip, especially in lower ranks. Let's create an example so you can see where we're going with this. 
Let's say you have two waves coming towards you and your team is looking to fight at Scuttle. You can theoretically rotate to Scuttle and a few different things can happen. One, your team will win the skirmish with you getting a kill. Two, your team will win the skirmish and you gain nothing. Three, your team wins the skirmish but you die in the process. Four, your team loses the skirmish and you may or may not have died. With these scenarios in mind, you only have one real outcome where you gain anything. If you rotate to the fight and end up gaining nothing, you've actually lost quite a few resources. You'll have lost around 260 gold or a kill's worth from the minion wave as well as a ton of experience. If the wave ended up crashing at your turret, you also lose control of the wave and are put in danger since the wave is now pushing back towards the enemy. When you're considering consistency, you need to remember that if you're the carry, you need to get yourself as strong as possible. If the choices are between a small chance to gain a lead from a play or the constant benefit of two entire waves, the choice should be clear. When we say to make selfish plays, we mean that you should pick the option that will consistently give you a benefit and make you stronger. If you play every game coin flipping fights, you're likely to fall behind. Sure, your allies have a chance at getting a lead, but they aren't in every game you play. You are the consistent variable in each of your games, so why not play around yourself and ensure that you are as strong as possible? Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guides tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what is one piece of advice you'd give to someone in the rank below you? Honestly, I'd say to take your time when learning the game. Being knowledgeable and practicing will take you way further than some cheese tactic ever will. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section down below. Nonetheless, let's dive right back into the video. Up next, we've got a great strategy to pair with consistency. It's communicating game plans with your allies. League of Legends is a team game and while solo queue can feel chaotic, you can take steps to make it a bit more organized. It may be hard to imagine how consistency plays a factor in communication, but it's actually quite important. Being able to consistently communicate key information to your allies can be game-changing. One of the most common things you can communicate to your team each game is playing around Rift Herald's timer at 8 minutes. Each game, you can ask your allies at around 7 minutes if they'd like to play around Herald. This not only gives you time to prepare for it, but it also puts the thought into the rest of your team's head. Now that they're thinking about Herald, they can prepare for it and take action. You can plan out key objectives like Dragon each and every game by simply talking with your team around the timer. That's not all either. If you're able to track the jungler, you can usually tell where and when their first gank will happen. Each game, you can let your allies know where the enemy jungler will gank and you can usually give a rough estimate. Some people have it in their heads that the jungler will usually gank bot lane at around 350 so they try to play around it with a counter gank or by safely setting up the wave. You can learn these important timings and constantly let your allies know about them. As we said before, you're the only consistent variable in each game, so if you can reduce the number of mistakes that your allies will make, your chances of winning will skyrocket. Oh, and speaking of which, having consistently good communication includes not flaming your allies for letting them tilt you. Make sure you keep a level head each and every game so that you can play to win and guide your team to victory. Next up, we've got limiting your champion pool. Now, on its own, this idea doesn't sound like it can be impacted by consistency. Having a smaller champion pool doesn't necessarily benefit you in a consistent way, at least not in the way you'd think. The real impact of having a smaller champion pool is that you will play the same champions multiple times. Being able to fully master a champion means that you can perform on them nearly every game. This means you'll consistently pull off that Riven ERWQ burst combo without fail. With this mastery, you'll be able to understand how to play each and every matchup so that you can consistently be on the winning side of it. If you're able to master your champion, you'll be able to pull off every aspect of them at a consistent rate without even thinking. This alone is why one tricks are able to climb the ladder so high and so quickly. Once you're able to make everything second nature, you can focus on other aspects of the game. You won't be worried about getting Samira's instant S combo each and every time. Instead, you'll instinctually pull it off and spend that focus on the rest of the fight or on a macro play. Having a small champion pool is extremely beneficial and it's one of the fastest ways to climb. Just make sure that you're taking notes either physically or mentally for your champion. 
This includes things like build paths for different situations, how to navigate certain matchups, and what combos are suited for different fights. Overall, play your champion with purpose and try to be as consistent as you can with them so that you can focus your attention elsewhere. Before we continue on to the end of the video, climbing can be hard and sometimes you'll need help or someone to play with. If you want to join an amazing community of people like you that love lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. So what are you waiting for? Join us! Pulling us towards the end of the video, we want to remind you all of a few things. First off, yes, consistency is key to improvement and it's an extremely powerful tool to implement into your gameplay. These tactics and strategies work best with practice and self-discipline. That being said, don't forget to apply consistency to other aspects of your life that can also impact your gameplay. Make sure you're sleeping enough, drinking water, and taking time to take care of yourself. If you're able to mentally be on high alert for your games, then you will have amazing focus and you will improve. Consistency is important everywhere you look, so make sure you don't skip out on making sure you are the best you can be. Take care of yourself, focus on your knowledge of the game, practice it, and trust us, you'll climb in no time. And that sums up our video for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to join our Pro Guides family at ProGuides.com where we offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you just won't catch anywhere else. So stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to improve, be sure to check out some of our other videos. Regardless, we'll see you guys in the next one. And as always, good luck on the Rift and may the LP God smile down upon you.